In this video, I'm going to show you how to hook up API template and create PDFs in ADNN and not just images like I showed previously. If you're curious about the image portion, check out the video I have pinned up in the corner. But in this case, these workflows will allow you to create PDFs from NNN. But before we can do this, we actually need to create the PDF template. So if we go over to API template, uh, if you use the link in the description and sign up to one of the paid accounts that does support the channel, and I greatly appreciate if you do. But once you create the account, you want to click on Manage Templates and click on New PDF Templates. Now in here, we actually have two different ways we can create the templates, either directly with uh, HTML or with a, a visual editor. I'll show you a quick example for both, but in this case, we're going to do HTML demo, and we're going to choose uh, one of these ones. So it kind of gives you a breakdown of what it's going to look like. If you click on any of these, it'll give you a quick demo. But we'll pick this one, why not? Click on Create. And it's going to come up in your template list. So click on Edit. And if you're familiar with HTML code, this is what it's going to look like. I'm not too familiar with it, so I'm not going to dive too much into this, but I at least want to go over it to show you how to use this if you choose. With the images portion, you could essentially come in here and set up words, and then when we use N8N to override it, it replaces those words. But with the PDF versions, they're essentially just placeholders. So if you don't include it in your JSON information that you send from N8N, it's going to be blank here. So for instance, if you come over to the JSON, this is all the information that we would need to send for it to come out to look like this. If we decided to not include the items, for instance, that whole thing. So right now I took out the items. If we click on Quick Preview, it won't use up any of our credits. That's all gone. Keep that in mind. If you don't include some of this stuff, it's not going to look the way you expect it to. This information you can update through N8N, through a workflow. And I'll show you how to do it. One thing to keep in mind, with this, you can make up your own variables and put them in wherever you want. So if you look over here on the right, this invoice number, that is a variable on that JSON, so invoice number. So this is what's going to pop up there. If we wanted to create our own, you can. So we'll just put in, uh, so like build to, say we want to put in something else afterwards. I'm just going to copy this. And put in like name. I know it doesn't really make sense, but just for this example. So we come over to the JSON, we hit enter, put in quotes the same variable name we just gave it. And then testing. Make sure you have a comma at the end, and make sure it's the same format as the rest of it. So if we do a quick preview, now billing to testing. So you can add your own variables and put them in here and you'll see them pop up. And if I took that out, for instance, and ran it again, it's gone, but you still have the break because that placeholder is there still. You get what I'm trying to say. I'm not too familiar with HTML, so I'm not gonna get too involved in this one, but I just want to show you that you can create your own variables, put them in here, and then whenever you go to NNN, you just have to fill in the information accordingly. That is the HTML version. The way that I would probably use it if I end up using this is the other visual editor. So if we go back to a new PDF template, we have this other option, create PDF with the visual editor. So as you can see down here, it says no coding skills required. It does support custom CSS. But for this example, we'll just pick this one. Okay, now over here, if you look at the editor, you got an HTML, that was the first one, and this, what you see is what you get, is what that stands for. You click on edit, and this is more friendly for most people, I'm guessing. <laughs> but as you can see, you do have a lot of these placeholders, so it's the same kind of information. So anything in these two curly brackets is what the variables are going to be. So by default, out of these, out of the gate, all the ones that they use in the template are going to be here already. But like I showed earlier, you can actually come in here and add your own. So for instance, like this logo right now is a upload a picture. So if you come up here to top, there's a bunch of these editors. This one is the image. So you can upload an image, click here, browse, find your picture, put it up. 
But say I want to have this option to be able to fill in an image source. So if I delete this and put in double brackets, image underscore URL, and then double brackets again. I'm going to copy this just so I make sure I name it correctly. Save that. If I go to JSON and just near the top, I'm going to do the same thing. Put in double quotes, colon, and then I'm going to put in a URL in the, in the quotes. So I'm just going to go to here, grab this guy, paste it in there. And then if I do a quick preview, you'll see that that initial logo that was there is now I take that back out and I don't include it. And now you just get this placeholder and it doesn't look good. Whatever you want to update, you need to make sure you include it in the JSON information. Now with this template, it does give you almost everything it, it can offer. So if you want to do a QR code, it kind of gives you the, the website and then it automatically renders it as a QR code. Same with the barcode, so on and so forth. And down here, it automatically configures this, the, um, the item breakdown in the for loops. If you want to get into this and dig more into it, they do have some tutorials, the template language, or start with the PDF template. There's links so you can look into it. Once you're done editing everything on here, you want to make sure you hit save, because if you make changes and then try to upload the JSON information without saving, whatever you change isn't going to work. So make sure you hit save. That's messed me up a few times. I'm going to go over the Google Sheets real quick and then the workflow, and then I'll come back to show you about the JSON information. But if we go to the Google Sheets, we have just the uh, basic setup here. So you would essentially set up the headers for each one of the fields that you want to change on the uh, template. In this example, I'm just changing the invoice number, the website, image URL, which we added, uh, the invoice date, and invoice due date. So one thing that you may or may not know, because I didn't until recently, if you put in a date here, if you come over the due date and say you want it to be 30 days out past the invoice date, you can hit equals, select the invoice date, and then plus 30. And Google Sheets is smart enough to realize that you're trying to add 30 days, and it automatically does it for you. Very handy. <laughs> I didn't realize it did that. That is essentially the setup for the, uh, the visual editor. If we go over to the items, in this example, we're just having one invoice, but you can do this workflow with multiple. I'll show you that in a moment. But the invoice number is what NNN is going to get the array of items by. So make sure you have the correct invoice number here with the product name, units, unit price, and then for the total, I just did a simple this times this equals that. I also want to show that if you do have an invalid number here, like an A or name or whatever, the code in N8N will actually be smart enough to filter out this. So if I was to try to send this with this A, API template is going to fail. So I want to make sure that it was built in so that that didn't happen to you. So if we go to N8N, this is the uh, general workflow. I did want to show this real quick, uh, create dates. So before I realized that in Google Sheets, I was coming into N8N and doing my own, essentially. So if you do the curly brackets and then type in or just choose now, it gives you the timestamp for now. If you do dot format, and then it defaults to year, year, month, month, day, date. You can always rearrange those letters. So if you want the days first, month second, year last, or month first, you can rearrange it. But if you go right before the format and put in plus or dot plus, you can then put a 30, comma, and then a unit. So if you want to put days, it'll add 30 days. If you want to put in months, it'll add months. So that's how I was doing it until I realized that Google Sheets can do that as well. So something to keep in mind if you ever need to do that. It's very handy. I'm going to go ahead and run this just so you see how it goes. So first, it's going to go to Google Sheets, get the invoices, where it's going to filter it based on the PDF link. If the PDF link is blank, meaning it hasn't been done yet, it's going to grab it. So you can have multiple rows in here if you want to. So you see the row number, invoice number, website, image URL. It then goes and loops through. So if you did have multiple invoices, this can accommodate for that. The items sheets 
it goes by the invoice number, which I just dragged over from here, invoice number, and that's the value of one. It then gets all the units that have, or I'm sorry, all the items with that invoice of one. And you can see down here, it has unit A and gives invalid total. So in this code node, you can see that I am passing the invoice from the loop over items. It then goes to the items, the get items for invoice. So if you look over here, it says four items. So it got those four different products. If you look here, over here on the right, now it has all the information that we will need in the future nodes in one place. So the invoice is here and then the items here. And if you look down here, we got the filters so that if you do have an A in there, which I did, it's not going to return it. So we only have the three items instead of the four. Very convenient. If we go to create PDF, this is where we will put that JSON. So if we go back to the API template and go to the JSON, we will copy all this. Go to and then make sure you choose PDF, create, choose your template ID, paste it in here. Replace what you have in your workflow. Just so you can see what I did. I left the company email, all that stuff alone. Invoice number, I grabbed it from the create item array. Okay, so then the items, as you can see, this is just giving me back an array. And then I used a uh, stringify, so it actually looks nice over here. So it returns this, doesn't modify anything, but then adds um, two space separator. So that's what gives me the tab. So this essentially looks the same as the JSON that is on the website. It then does what it needs to do, gives me back the document URL, and then go to get an account. I just need this to get the API remaining. And then I update the Google Sheet with the uh, URL and the remaining. And you just got to make sure the column matches on the row number. We go over to the PDF visual editor demo. We now have that PDF link we can click on. And there is our invoice with the image that we submitted, the uh, invoice number, the invoice date, and the due date, and the different products we put in. That is one way you can use the uh, API templates PDF if you go in there and set it up the way you want and just update the parameters accordingly. That's one way you can use it. That's probably how I would use it. It's very convenient. That way you know it's always the same. But with the um, API template, they also give you the option to just submit raw HTML data and it can create the PDF with that. Okay, so as you can see, this doesn't look the same as this node. This is a general HTTP request node. If you're curious how I set this up, I'll go ahead and show it to you real quick. Otherwise you can skip ahead. If we go to the API template, hit the X to get back to this screen. And then at the top right, click on resources. And then under API references, we wanna click on the most recent version. So the latest version here, version two. Scroll down a little bit. We're going to temporarily use this command because it's the only one that has the curl option. So we click on curl. This is all the information we'll need for creating a PDF, but we're going to change it a little bit. If we copy this, go back to N8N and look for HTTP request. We can actually click on import curl, paste it in here, import. So now it automatically configures the HTTP request node with all the parameters that we want for the most part. We still need to change it a little bit. But as you can see, it's essentially looking for us to just put in our API key, which would just be straight text, which we don't want to do. So like if we were to ever do a screen sharing thing or share the workflow with somebody else, that API key would be built in and we don't want that. So a better way to do this is actually store it purely inside N8N as a credential. If you come down here under the send headers, we want to copy the name. So this x-api-key. Under authentication, we want to change this from none to generic credential type. And then for the type, we want to choose header auth because this was under the header. So we want to choose header. And then in the dropdown, click on create new credential. Make sure you name this because otherwise you're going to have no idea what this is for. So API template. Paste in the name here. And then the value is going to be your actual API key. So if you're not sure where to get that, if you go back to the API website, you go to API integration, your API key will be right here. And click on copy API key. Go back, paste it in the value, hit submit. 
So now your API key is stored securely in your N8N under API template. I have three because I have two other examples already. Now you won't need to worry about that API key being exposed. We close out of this. We can now actually turn off send headers. We don't need this information anymore. And in this case, we're actually not going to use a template ID. So we can actually take out the query parameters as well. Now for the body content type, we're going to switch this from using the fields below to using JSON. Now it's not the same JSON that you would use from the template that we created since we're not using a template. We actually need to use a format that they have on here. So we go on the left hand side, go to create PDF from HTML. And if you notice the website is different. We click on here, copy this top one, go back to N8N. Before it was just create PDF. We paste it in here, PDF from HTML. So now it's going to go a different place. And if you look, if you click on this to minimize that again, this is the actual JSON information that we need to send over. So I'm click on copy and paste that into the JSON. Make sure it switches over to expression. If we expand this, we can get a better look at it. This body, if you're familiar with HTML, this is the header. So this is the information that we're actually going to fill in the previous nodes in the workflow. And the other thing you may want to change, because by default it's super huge, the uh, font size is 15 pixels. So if we want to change that to like eight. So I'll, I'll just show you, I'll switch the example back to eight or um, 15, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So if we come over to here, this is the same setup I just went through, but the eight pixels was what it was. That's what it should be. I'm going to put it to 15 just to show you the example and everything else is essentially the same. So I'll go ahead and run this. You could set this up so that throughout the workflow, it's generating this HTML. But for this example, I'm just using ChatGPT to generate a sample one because I'm not too concerned about what it looks like for this example. But once it does, it's then going to send that information over to API template through this API call. And one thing to note, the content. So out of the uh, message model, the HTML here, I just dragged that over, but you also want to add in these um, replace. So replace this with this, and then another replace that with that. Otherwise, it's not going to be in the correct format for API templates. So that is very important. Make sure you include that. If you were to try to run this and you didn't include that replace stuff, you just dragged it over the HTML over you'll get a message saying it needs to be a valid JSON. If you aren't getting, if you're getting that invalid JSON, make sure you put in that extra replace stuff here. So I'm going to copy this, but you need to make sure that at the end of the HTML, you put replace that with that, and replace that with that. Over here, you can see all this. It's there. It works. Um, again, in this example, I have I put it back to the default of 15 just to show you what it will look like, but I recommend changing it to like eight. So once it's done, it gives us back that um, download URL. And then again, I just got the uh, information so I could update the sheet with the remaining. And if we go back to the sheets, we can go to HTML directly and click on this one. And there we go. So this is the 15. See how big it is? compared to the original one I had in there, which was just eight. So that's more reasonable. That's the default. So make sure you change that if you want it to be smaller. But as you can see, it created a sample invoice with just the HTML. So it gives you the option to either create it through HTML, or if you want to go in and actually create the template and fill out the forms and fields and everything, create the variables, so on and so forth. Now, obviously you can set up an in to actually generate a, a good HTML flow and whatnot. I don't know how to do it, so I'm not gonna <laughs> show how to do it. I figured this would at least give you an example of how you can do it. Yeah, hopefully that cleared up some um, questions about the API template PDF editor and how to use it in N8N. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for future videos, Leave them there as well. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.